What's going on everybody? It's your boy Stas Arsili back with another banging video, man. And on today's episode, I wanted to talk to you guys about a topic that I've been hearing a lot about people's been asking me questions about it. A lot of people's kind of been talking about it. The topic is when you carry a 1911 or 2011 or 1911 style pistol, should you carry should you carry with the hammer down or the hammer cocked back? That is today's episode. So when you're carrying a 1911 style pistol, such as the 2011, the Staccato 2011, or let's say it's a Wilson Combat, or let's say it's a Springfield Progeny, whatever 2011 platform, it doesn't matter. Do you carry with the hammer down or the hammer cocked back like I have it right now? So first things first, let's go ahead and unload this pistol, make it safe so we can handle it properly. All right. Pistol, pistol is fully unloaded. So the question is, do you carry, is it safer for you to carry with a hammer cocked back or with the hammer down? So I'm gonna tell you guys why I carry with the hammer cocked back like it is. Several, re several reasons why I do that. For one, this is a hammer fired pistol. So what that means is that the hammer has to be cocked back in order for it to fire. And when you pull that trigger, the hammer cocks back, you pull the trigger, it goes boom, it goes and it cocks itself back and so on and so forth. So the question is, should you carry with the hammer down? Should you carry with the hammer in a down position? The problem I have with that and the problem why I don't carry with the hammer down is if I have to draw this weapon and use it in a self-defense situation or whatever situation, let's say I am carrying it on duty or even self-defense and I draw this weapon, this weapon comes out a holster the hammer is down. When I pull that trigger, nothing happens because the hammer have to get cocked back. So I now have to either draw my weapon, rack the slide to cock the hammer back, or I, I will have to draw my weapon and use my thumb and cock the hammer back. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So those are situations, those are things that you don't wanna be doing if you're in a self-defense situation and you gotta use this firearm for self-defense, you don't have time. If you look at a lot of active self-defense shootings, you don't have time to draw your weapon, cock it back, and then engage that target. Sometimes you might have time, but if you look at a lot of real life active shooting, it literally happened where that person had to get that gun out of the holster, get it on target, and start putting lead down range. And that's just the reality of it. That's just reason number one. The other reason why I wouldn't want to carry in this position and have to rely on my thumb to cock the hammer back is that the way how these hammer fired pistols are designed is that let's say I pull a hammer back and let's say my fingers slip. See, staccato have some nice little grooves on a hammer and it's pretty hard to really slip off of that. But let's say your adrenaline is pumping, somebody's shooting at you. Now you got to take your thumb and cock this hammer back. Let's say your hammer slips, right? So staccato, what I've noticed with this pistol is that when you cock it back and it's in a certain position, it's not going to go back forward anymore. It's like, it's locked right here. It's not gonna do anything. Nothing's gonna happen. And if I cock it all the way back, you have to pull the trigger. So one good thing about staccato that I realized that I recently found out about is that if you try to cock this hammer back, once it, once it gets to that position, you hear it, 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 it kind of make a click. I'm gonna be quiet so you can hear it click. See right there? It's not going forward. And that's a safety mechanism. And the reason why they have that is that and so, and for some 1911 and 2011 pistols, if you cock the hammer back, there's not a hammer block that's blocking the hammer from striking the, the striker and hitting the round. In some 2011 pistols, I can't show you in the staccato because the staccato have that safety mechanism where the hammer is not gonna go back. But for the same reasons why I don't like that is because let's say, I'm gonna cock it all the way back. Let's say I draw my weapon, I cock it, and I don't get to go all the way back. And let's say it's right here. When I pull that trigger, it's still, the trigger is not, is not released. 
is still not doing anything. So I would have to go again and try to pull the trigger, uh, put the hammer all the way back and for it, it, for it to, to, for it to work. So to me, that's kind of a safety concern, not in the, not in the sense of the gun being unsafe, but it's a safety concern that if you're in a self-defense situation and you have to draw your weapon and let's say you want to cock it back, now, if, now you have a dead trigger. So the last thing you want to happen if you're in the middle of a self-defense situation or a defense situation, whether you're on duty or it's personal defense or whatever, you draw your weapon, you go to cock the hammer back and then you make it this far. Now you got a dead trigger, you're pulling the trigger, nothing's happening. Now you gotta sit here and try to rack your slide back and get that, you know, get that trigger engaged. So you get the hammer engaged, so you can go ahead and engage, engage the target. So those are the reasons why I feel personally that when you carry a 1911, 2011 type pistol, if your firearm doesn't have that safety mechanism where you cock it and when it gets to that certain point, it kind of stops it from going back forward. If, you, if your firearm doesn't have that, that's a big safety issue because other 1911, 2011 type pistols doesn't have this hammer stop right here to prevent it from hitting the round and accidentally firing. And that's a big problem because if you, let's say if you're firing the other pistol that doesn't have this hammer block right here and you go ahead and you're gonna try to, you know, cock that hammer back with your thumb and then you release it like that, it's gonna fire. See, is the staccato, that's another reason why I like staccato, is that it's not, it's, it's blocking. There's a hammer block right there that's gonna prevent the hammer from accidentally falling and striking the, hitting the striker and hit and shooting that round off. So that's a good thing, you see that? Staccato have that safety mechanism to prevent that. Some pistols don't, doesn't have that. All firearms, all 1911, 2011 pistols are not created equally. And a lot of them don't have that hammer block. So that's a big issue for me. That's a safety issue when you try to cock that hammer back. Well, the two safety issues. One, you can, your hand can slip off that, that hammer and hit that, you know, hit that striker and go ahead and hit the firing pin and, you know, sh shoot the round off or whatever. But also, it's a it's a hazard to me because if you cock this back and you don't make it all the way back when you try to pull that trigger you got a dead trigger nothing's happening and then you still gotta waste time and then try to cock it back so that's why i feel if you're carrying a 1911 2011 type pistol this is the best way to carry for self-defense duty type positions a lot of people think that you know you shouldn't do that but honestly like i said unless you pull that trigger staccato unless you pull that trigger the hammer is not going to fall it's not going to engage the firing pin and the round is not going to fire staccato have that for people that worry about carrying the firearm like this staccato have that fire that fire that block that unless you're engaging the the grip safety and unless you disengage the actual manual slate safety that gun is not going to fire it's going to block it so even if you're carrying like this if you're if you don't engage the grip safety and you don't release the manual safety, if that hammer happens to drop, it's not gonna, it's, it, it, what's gonna happen, it's gonna stop right here and this is what's gonna happen. If that hammer, for some reason, if you're carrying with it cocked back and it happens to drop somehow, some miraculous way, it just spontaneously drop, it's gonna drop right here and it's not gonna fire. So for those of you who worry, worry about carrying a 2011 a staccato pistol, like I said, I can't speak for other 2011s, I don't have that knowledge if other 2011s have this same safety mechanism on, on the hammer. But if you're carrying a staccato, you know you can carry with your gun all the way cocked back because even if that hammer happens to fall, as long as the grip safety and the manual safety is not engaged, if that hammer happens to fall, it's gonna be blocked by the hammer block. So that's my thoughts on 2011, 1911 pistols on carrying with, with the hammer cocked back or carrying it in a stove position. Do not carry a 2011, 1911 pistol like this because you might not have time if you draw your weapon for self-defense or duty, whatever, some bad guy decides to start shooting at you, you're not, you might not have time to go ahead and, you know what I'm saying? You might not have time to go ahead and do that tap rack type drill, you know what I'm saying? And so that's just seconds that you might need to survive that gunfight. And another reason why, the secondary reason why, Staccato's doesn't have that problem, but other 2011 pistols might have that problem. Not all of them have that same hammer block that unless it, if the, the, the grip safety and the manual safety is engaged to block that hammer from actually hitting that firing pin. So 
Those are the reasons why I feel that when you're carrying a specifically a staccato type pistol, 2011 type pistols that have that hammer block, this is how you carry that firearm. Do not be afraid of the hammer dropping. It's like I said, there's a hammer block that unless these safeties are engaged, unless you unless you engage this safety and disengage this safety, that hammer, if, if this is the only way it's gonna fire if that hammer drops right now, is that both safeties are released. But if the safety is on, the manual safety is on, that hammer hopping happens to drop, it's not gonna hit that firing pin. I'm gonna show you right now, it's gonna be blocked right here. You hear that little block? This is gonna stop it from firing when the safeties are not engaged. So that, that's my two cents on how you carry a 2011. If you carry with the hammer cocked back or you carry it in the stole position, man, carry it with your gun ready to rock and roll, man. Just engage the safety. You got the grip safety. That hammer is not going to discharge the firearm if it just spontaneously, magically drops by itself, which is not going to happen, man. But anyways, man, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Sealy Strategic. Just wanted to do a quick video, man. I've been having a lot of questions. People have been inboxing me. There's been big debates online about it. And I'm just here to tell you, man, carry your firearm, the 2011, in a ready-to-go position, man. Because if you ever draw this weapon in self-defense and you got to shoot this thing, man, you're not going to have time to go ahead and do this for the most part. You might have time. Maybe you will. Maybe you will not. Who knows, man, but to, to play it safe, just carry your firearm in a red position, ready to go, man. But anyways, like, like this I said, is just man, my opinions. Um, I'm no subject matter ex expert, you know what I'm saying? I only have 10 and a half years of military experience, you know, shooting guns and everything. I'm about to join the police academy to become a police officer. So I may or may not know what the hell I'm talking about. Like I said, when people online is giving you advice and telling you stuff, man, take it for what it's worth, do your own research, and if it works for you, instill it. If it doesn't, just leave it like a bag of bricks, man. Just leave it alone. But anyways, man, it's your boy, Stats on Sealy. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode, man. Make sure you guys like, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. And remember, man, always be greater than you were yesterday because we live to train, because we train to live. But the most importantly, most important, importantly, you need to understand that you are your own first responder, man. The police is not going to be there that second when you need them, man. So go ahead and go out. To, make sure you go out and train. Make sure you shoot. Make sure you get familiar with your firearms, man. Don't depend on the police because, like I said, they might not show up when you need them. You, you're, you're your own first responder, man. So you got to make sure you know how to respond and defend yourself, all right, man? But anyways, man, thank you guys for tuning in. Until the next episode, we'll see you on the next one. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second, man. Before we get out of here. I know you guys are checking out the orange sealer strategics, man. I know you guys are checking out the orange, man. Check it out, man. Let me go ahead and turn it on so you guys can see it. You see the logo, man. You see the logo, the, the, the brown camel. You see the brown camel rifle lo logo, man. If you guys like this design, man, make sure you guys hit up the merch shop. Make sure you guys use the discount codes to get your discounts, man. Make sure you guys get your swag. Get swaggy or not. Get swaggy. Go start looking like swaggy P, man. Get your swaggy P on at the Sealy Strategic Merch Shop, man. But until next time, man, we'll see you guys in the next episode. It's your boy, Sassar Sealy. Until the next one, peace. Ha <laughs>